What's up everybody, Jesse here, or Game Over Jesse as some of you all may know me, and today we have a very special guest here with us to join us on the Highlands Games Cast for January 21st. Chris, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for those who Hello. may not know who you are. I am Gunda Chris, I go by Chris though, or Christine, um, and I make custom Amiibo. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You uh, also have your own YouTube channel, do you have a Twitch as well? I have a YouTube, I have a Twitch. I use YouTube a lot more just because I do like a lot of crafting tutorials and DIYs. Um, so, and some other things, but <laughs> so YouTube mostly. All right. And joining us as always is our faithful co host, Daniel. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Um, <laughs> I was, well, actually, I was only on one time, but yeah. Um, or is it two now? Uh oh. It's, it's two now. So. It's two now. Uh oh. Jesse, you have to be absent for the next one yes. to make up for it. Um, People in the chat are saying, yay, Gibbs is back. Or uh, okay. Daniel's Gibbs. back. Yes. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Gibbs either. Um, <laughs> yeah, I co host this DAG thing. It's awesome. Um, and also, I um, currently have the most ghetto set up um, in my <laughs> closet. Um, with the laptop on a stool, and I have nowhere to put the microphone, so it's actually sitting on my keyboard. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's how you do it? Yeah. It sounds like a good setup. <laughs> I uh, I've mentioned this story before, but that was uh, whenever I first started my YouTube channel. I didn't have a room that didn't have a lot of echoing. Plus, a lot of the other rooms were really loud. So the I guess who I would call the most famous guest I ever had on the podcast uh, was. Uh, Greg Miller from Kinda Funny XIGN. Oh. So I had my interview with him where I was in my closet, but he was, uh, he didn't mind. He was like talking about how he's had to do similar stuff before, like doing a voiceover or something. There's no quiet room. So you just go to where like there's clothes everywhere to dampen out the sound. So, yeah. <laughs> Can I just say how much of an amazing human being he is? Oh, I, I didn't it's know just... you were a fan. Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's such a sweetheart he actually did a like amiibo uh what was it like um thing at like pax and it was really cool like a whole panel with uh an other like amiibo collectors and stuff like that and he was talking about it too and it was awesome yeah there's yeah, so he's really cool there was uh, a few people that i get in some of the comments that are like oh your name is such a ripoff of greg miller and i'm like to be fair, I've had him on my YouTube channel a few times, and he approves. Like he said that he thinks it's awesome that he was able to inspire someone enough to like use their name or whatever as a tribute to them. Because he says that's what, uh, like, some of the inspiration from him came from other people that like wanted to just take whatever they're passionate about and start their own thing. So he thinks it's awesome that he's able to inspire people in that way because it makes it full circle so for those who are watching that don't know that's uh i guess the story of the name of my channel um the but, origin story yes, I the, know. The there's origin gonna be a gritty story. reboot oh, no. film soon <laughs> so on today's podcasts we will get to the questions as always for the mailbag later in the video the questions will come from youtube and patreon if you have some questions that you desire to be answered by myself daniel or the guests you can become a patreon subscriber to make your questions become priority so sometimes we get too many to cover them all so if you want to make sure that your question does get answered head over to patreon.com slash game over jesse some of the news topics that we have is talking about the recent nintendo labo i i guess that's how you pronounce it I think it's you, labo labo yeah. yes. yes like laboratory yeah. but <clears throat> Nintendo. Yes, we we have a new interview where Nintendo furthers their thoughts on VR and 4K gaming, and we will end it with PlayStation releasing uh, their own not amiibo is what I'm calling them <laughs> because <laughs> they're basically uh, just amiibo without the functionality of uh, the game. And of course, as always, we have shout outs from our current Patreons. So thank you, George Martinez, Megan Neal, Casey Willis, Rusty Caulfield, Link, Use the Triforce, Tight Lipped Gaming, Robbie Morgan, Shadow to Us, Lovable Christy, Key of Time, 15, 
Lunarium, and our new Patreons from the past couple of weeks, Ashley, Monica, and Michelle. Thank you all. Uh, and thank you, Lovable Christy. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> lovable Christy. Yes. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I'm like, so lovable. <laughs> yes. All right. So our first topic of uh, the podcast is you. Oh. <laughs> so who are you and why why should we care about you? Well, <laughs> no, if, they, I, if they want to care, they don't have yes. to. But no, I, I always find it as like, instead of just asking them like, hey, like, what do you do? Where can people find you? Uh, how do people know you? I always find it like an interesting way to sort of throw them off to be like, why should we care about you? Because you answer it the same way as you would any of the other questions. So yes, Gonda Chris. Yes, that is, is that true. how it's pronounced? Gonda Chris or Gonda Chris? Yes. Gonda Chris. Yeah, it's a really weird nickname that I gave myself like years ago in high school, and it just stuck <laughs> with me. So I was just I was gonna change it actually, and then Amiibo blew up, and I was just like, oh, I gotta keep it. So, now you're stuck with it. Now yeah. I'm stuck with it. Um, but it definitely threw me off <laughs> the curveball. Um, but uh, yeah, Ooh. I just customize amiibos, um, and I take the figurines and I turn them into other characters or different outfits. Um, and I change the box art too by my friend Seth. Hey, he does all the graphics, and I do people too. I make them into little me's. So that's what I do. <laughs> and what? sort of started your passion for this because i assume it started out as just like a creative hobby for you and it's turned and, into yeah. sort of a job i guess um well it actually all started in high school it, it's a really complicated long story i don't know if you guys already hear it but yeah that's um, why that's why you were here that's why yeah <laughs> the 30 people are watching right now oh, to hear your story yeah. so um well, I was like really quiet in high school, especially in um, middle school. I was really, really like by myself. I didn't have any friends. My sister's friends were my friends, um, that sort of deal. I did get bullied a little bit in middle school as well. High school, not so much. Um, but uh, my sister dragged me to my first video game club. And it was really cool because then I just met a ton of people who had the same interests. I also tried Super Smash Bros. Melee for the first time. Um, and then a lot of like my friends taught me how to play with like advanced techniques and they went to tournaments and all those things. So it was really cool to again make friends in that atmosphere. And at the same time, I was taking art too. So um with art like i would take the characters that i played in melee like kirby and make them out of clay or draw them or you know whatever i actually even made like minda's mask at, in ceramics because i told her it was like an inca tribe <laughs> design and she approved it and i was like yes <laughs> so i made oh, it man. yeah it was it was just really cool that's how i like i combined two things that i loved um and you know, and, and it was really awesome for my friends to even, like, give me requests on what to make. And then I would make it and they would sell it at, like, tournaments. So that's how me jumping into figurines um, became, like, a whole, like, thing. And then when Amiibo came out, it was just a lot easier for me to customize them. So I didn't have to start from scratch. It was like I had a base to work with and it was just a lot easier. So that's the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that it's really cool though. How did you feel about it once you started noticing that your little hobby was becoming popular with everyone? Um, well, it was crazy because uh, again, in like high school, middle school, I was I really did not like attention. Uh, it was neat the fact that I could make things and the attention wasn't drawn so much on me, but my art, so I could talk about my art all the time. Um, but then when when amiibo hit like they started doing research and trying to find out who i was so it was a little i was a little hesitant on posting anything really <laughs> about my life i just made it like my art um but then like ultimately i've always wanted to somehow be like a, an influencer or like a motivational speaker and so i realized that i have to kind of burst that bubble and and allow myself to grow so um yeah, it's it's a little scary, you know, putting yourself out there in the internet because you're going to get haters and, and yeah. judgments and all that stuff. Um, but definitely through these two years of custom Amiibos, like I realized that 
you're, you know, like you're going to have those haters, but you're going to have like people who are going to support your work and be there from day one. And that's the people that truly matter, especially your friends and family. So, um, that's why, like, I find it like really important for myself to not be so scared or hesitant on posting about me. I think it's really important to like get the attention from, from people who really do matter, you know, so just brush off, brush off those (laughs) those bad people and those haters yes i i think the the meme if anyone has seen the new star wars there's the famous meme that's going around where he brushes off his shoulder because of getting a bit off topic i guess (laughs) i I, I just like anytime someone like on twitter now uh mentions like a problem they have with someone or an issue that's come up they just use that meme and it's the whole shoulder brush thing. So, this is a <laughs> callback perfect. from what you were saying. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, do you have any questions for Chris? All right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> what's the cool, when, in your opinion, obviously, coolest custom amiibo you've made? Oh, uh, I would have to say Armored Me Too. <laughs> that one's my favorite, favorite. And just because, like, it brings back so many memories. So, mm-hmm. I have, um, I'm a male child, so, you know, male child is the forgotten child, (laughs) but, um, you know, I love my sisters to death, and uh, I remember a fond memory was going to the movie theater. We would walk to the movie theater, and every time a Pokemon movie came out, like, we'd get the cards, and we'd be, like, head over heels, and I remember that moment when, um, you know, Mewtwo Strikes Back, and I remember watching it, and and it was just a fond memory that my sisters shared. So, if anything, Pokemon were definitely, like, a huge like hit for me and my sisters we collected all the cards and and actually that's how i started to draw too was because of pokemon so <laughs> trying to draw the artwork from the cards yeah actually i had the 150 poster and it was like it had oh. s- the small characters on there <laughs> right and i started cool. drawing it and i remember and this is the first time i ever drew but it was like blastoise so i would sit there from like hours on end trying to draw blastoise and like yeah it was just crazy <laughs> no i don't i'm recording now <laughs> sorry oh, that's my fine. mom <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so i remember like drawing blastoise and i sat there like for hours trying to draw him and every time i made like one mess up i would erase it and go back and by the end of the day i had this really cool looking blastoise and we cut it out, and my sisters would play with them, and then rip them apart, and then have to redraw it. So that's how I got my practice. Yeah, there was a, a similar thing whenever I first started drawing. It was because of uh, I had the Ocarina of Time walkthrough. I don't know which version it was, but it had like giant sized images of uh, a bunch of the original artwork from Ocarina of Time. So when I wasn't playing the game, I would. I began tracing over a lot of the stuff, like I had huge images of Ganondorf and Link and some of the other stuff. So I began tracing from it, and then I actually started drawing the images without tracing it, just from looking at it or from memory. And I think um, I don't do much art anymore, but when I was in middle school and high school, um, I was always taking art classes, and that was sort of what inspired me to start doing that. And at one point, I also had um, like a how to draw Pokemon book where it like showed you the different steps of drawing a bunch of the Pokemon. So it's really cool, cool that you mentioned that Pokemon was sort of your inspiration. What about you, Daniel? Do you ever have any? Uh, I used to draw a lot more. Yeah. Same. Like when I was in school, I was drawing a lot. I hated art classes um, <laughs> because well, actually I had some beef with teachers. That's why I was a beef. I was a, I was a renegade. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Like, not a cool rebel, you know, like, but I was lame. But uh, um, I was kind of a rebel in my own way. So, I, yeah, I definitely had some issues with art teachers. So I took some art classes and hated them because I would do this. I worked, like, tirelessly on this great pastel piece, and the color blends are, like, really good. And it was, like, a lizard. It had, like, very – it had individual scales. It was, like, very detailed. I was super proud of it. And she's, like, just kind of glances at it and she's like, yeah, B, 78%. And I was like, that's so arbitrary. Like, I poured my heart into this and you're just like throwing a number at it without, but like after five seconds of looking at it, like what, what, why? <laughs> so yeah. anyways, yeah, that, that was my issues with art class. Plus I didn't like being told to draw a flower 20 times when I'm like, yeah, but I want to draw. But um, 
but I would draw on my own time quite a lot, and like I made some really cool uh, pieces. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know why it kind of fell off after uh, after school, and uh, I haven't really really done much uh, art wise. I, I still dabble here and there with some things. I don't really draw, but you know, I do a bit of music stuff. Like I fiddle with music a little bit. Getting off topic. Though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just going right. back to what you were saying about like art classes and stuff, I because someone can look at something and think it's like the mm-hmm. best drawing or painting in the world, and then someone else could look at it and be like, "Eh, it's okay." Yeah. So well, that's that's true. It's it's very much like subjective in that way. But, yeah. 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 But have you seen some modern art? Like they go for millions, and it's like a splat on the wall. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and your lizard sounds way more better than that. It was a cool lizard, man. <laughs> I had drawn it like what the, the one with like a crystal, and it was glowing. And, oh, it was cool. But um, I, actually, if you if you um, dig on my channel enough, there are some videos where it's actually like on the wall in a couple shots, or like Ooh. like you'll see it kind of in the back. Um, I'll have to dig but yeah, it's a, I know. You need to get a picture to bring it up. Jess is gonna go on a hunt through my channel, finding <laughs> yes. trying to find the lizard. <laughs> Spot but. The uh, lizard. <laughs> yeah, I did that when I was like seventeen. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so, I still have it for some reason. <laughs> All right, so a, a couple of more questions, and maybe uh, Daniel has another that he wants to ask you. But with Do, your but... okay, uh, with your nope. YouTube channel, um, you recently passed twenty five thousand subscribers. I did. So that that's did. a huge milestone. I so know. <laughs> how, how does that feel that there are that many people? And then even on Twitter, there's almost as many people following. You. So how does it feel knowing that there are that many people that are interested in what you're doing? Like you mentioned earlier, sometimes you have people that are hating on stuff, but like there may be one of them for every thousand people that love what you're doing. So the people mm-hmm. that enjoy your content, obviously outweighing people don't enjoy so what's it like for you knowing that there are that many people that support you and what you do i think it's just amazing i think it's just incredible like if i could have them all in a room that's a ton (laughs) of people you know like i think people like um think about numbers too much sometimes and Mm -hmm. uh, they forget that each person is an individual and that's someone behind a keyboard you know so just imagine if they were in the room i mean even having like 30 friends over is still like a significant amount. I mean, that's 30 friends that, um, you would have never been able to meet. So like to have it in the thousands, like, again, it's scary, but I love it. Like, I, I want to say that definitely like my community, I rarely get any hating to be honest. And even so I'll just troll them and, <laughs> and they turn out, they turn out to be really nice people in the end, which is funny, but, um, no, I have a really good community and, and I think it's amazing that they support my work. And when it comes to any artists, like musicians or like actors or, you know, art in general, like, um, having a support system like that is like so important these days, if you want to try to make it as, anything but like the standard career you know like go to college get a degree and all that you know <laughs> so um i think it's just amazing and i love it and i love each and every supporter so uh yeah they're like family <laughs> uh, my final question uh-huh. for you is um you are a nintendo brand ambassador yeah so for different people like whether they're on youtube twitch uh they do stuff outside of YouTube or video making in general, there are still uh, different people that are Nintendo brand ambassadors or Nintendo ambassadors for different reasons. So what was it like for you whenever you uh, were first, I guess, approached by Nintendo and welcomed on or asked to come on to join their brand ambassador program? And what kind of opportunities have you been able to uh, take because of all of your work with the Amiibo and the YouTube channel and being an ambassador. Like events that maybe you were invited to or just special announcements or stuff that you were able to be a part of. Probably not the so, simplest way to ask that question. But it's I okay. I, I got the gist of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it was, it was amazing. I don't know. I haven't, I guess, like really told this story. I have a video on YouTube that tells like the reason, like, 
I guess, why I went after Nintendo and why I really wanted to become a Nintendo brand ambassador. I immediately out of high school actually wrote Nintendo a letter and I had sent them my artwork. And it and when I got it back in the mail, like they had sent me a letter back in the mail, I was super like excited. I opened it up and it was like the nicest decline letter in my entire oh, life. Wow. It was it was still even though it was a, a decline, like um, you know, it's still amazing to have received like a letter back stating like, oh, we love your work, but you know, like um, you know, not not this year. You're too young. <laughs> But, um, you know, it was just it was just more motivation for me to say, you know what, like, I'm going to try again in a couple of years and see how it happens and how it goes. And um, like, I've always, again, wanted to become part of Nintendo in some sort of way. And so last year is um, the year that I became a brand ambassador. Um, everything started happening for me, which was amazing. It was such an awesome opportunity. There's several people that I could thank for that um, that have gotten me where I am today. And, uh, Nintendo set me out actually to make a video for their YouTube channel that had custom amiibo in it. And like, I taught the hosts, uh, I taught, what was it? Kit and Krista, how to make their own custom amiibo. um, Yes. Uh, Everybody mm -hmm. knows them. They're, they're like yeah, the most yeah. loved people. They're, from they're amazing. They're amazing. If I can take them both home and put a ribbon on top <laughs> of them, I would. Because they're really, su- they're just nice people. Like, they're just so sweet. Um, and that was another opportunity that, like, um, came around. And I do get invited to, like, E3 or, like, I get products that I want to review, um, such and such. So uh, it was an amazing opportunity. And, and I can definitely, like you know, thank God came for gave me where I am and like the motivation that that letter gave me all those years ago. Like I never stopped taking the proper steps towards, you know, somehow becoming part of Nintendo and, and never give up is what I could definitely say. Just never give up. What were the the requirements that you were finally able to make this past year to become a Nintendo brand ambassador? Was it just that they thought you were too young or too, an experience when you first applied or what was the situation <laughs> well when i first applied it was straight out of high school and that was like several years ago that was like five years ago five six years ago um and they didn't have a nintendo brand ambassador program at the time um but i had made like charms i wanted to make my own jewelry line with like pokeballs and oh. you know like in uh, Mario mushrooms and whatever. Like I made a ton of random Pokeball charms and whatever. And I sent that in with the letter and everything. And I even had like printouts of like art that I did and stuff like that. It was really professional. I was really proud of myself <laughs> at, at that age. I, I surprised myself to be honest, but uh, they received, they sent everything back and then the letter was also in there. Um, and yeah, I was just, I was just too young. I was like 18, I think. <laughs> when i when i said that um but uh yeah and then when it came to become nintendo brand ambassador um i actually went to e3 for the first time last year um and then i met a couple of people and um i gave them my information and i was just like hey like is there's some sort of way that you can you know help me into becoming like a nintendo brand ambassador like i would appreciate it and yeah and i had to go through like a whole interview and and the whole process and then i got the email and it was official and yeah and it was it was really solidifying it was it was just like it was so amazing it was it was like something that i've always dreamt of coming true and um i cannot thank nintendo and for the people who truly believed in me that i could do it so yeah there's just there's a lot of work and a lot of up and ups and downs and i wouldn't trade it for the world <laughs> And uh, moving to you, Daniel, do you have anything? It's, it's a bit broad. Yeah, it's a broad question. But, you know, what if it's not a secret? Are there any, you know, future upcoming projects that you want to share with us or wow. any plans? Um, I do have one project um, <laughs> that I'm doing, and I don't know if I can say too much, um, but I am making two specific characters from persona and ruby um and that's for an upcoming project 
So I don't know which characters yet, but I have to do it from those two games. So I'm super excited. And I have a couple of other me's coming out um, that are going to be given to really cool people. And I have more YouTube videos coming soon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All, All right. right. Um, and finally, before we move on to the news topics, for anyone that's watching that may be a fan of yours or is just now becoming a fan of yours, do you have anything to say to them if they have similar interests and hobbies and stuff to maybe motivate them to keep on pursuing? Oh, yeah. Like, I, on my YouTube, like, channel, I definitely want to start talking a lot more about like motivation and and sometimes even me like behind the scenes and in a lot of artists behind the scenes they put out like pictures that are happy and and you know life is good and my life is amazing but you know even for me like I've had a lot of ups and downs and um you know, I go through a lot of things. And again, like these last two years were amazing. But I mean, there were certain times where it's just like it was really hard, like being an artist or independent artist, being a YouTuber, being anything that you want to be these days. It's a lot harder, you know, and um, and I just say keep going. Like if I had given up after I got that rejection letter from Nintendo, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like I, I wouldn't be as interested or as passionate you know, so even though I, you know, was declined, like I took it as, you know what, like this is my goal for the next couple of years. Like this is what I want to do. And I'm going to put like a hundred percent into it, you know, and I'm going to work hard. And that's how I ended up getting Nintendo brand ambassadors because of my hard work and my family and friends and the people who supported me. So if you have any interests or hobbies that you really want to pursue, I wholeheartedly believe that you can do it. You just have to take the proper steps and, you know, even the small battles, you know, you'll win and lose some, but when you do win, it's still a win and you should appreciate that and keep moving forward. So, yeah. <laughs> and for the people who, may be interested in purchasing some of your amiibo are they available for commission or how do you like give them away for like, giveaways or for certain uh people or are they commissioned work that someone can pay you so I used to do commission work, but then I realized that it's so much work. So anyone who's an artist and does commissions, like kudos to you. I <laughs> don't like it <laughs> like because you're answering the emails you're making the the commission and then you have to ship it and then answer them back and it's just like this whole process and you're getting like a ton of you know orders it is so overwhelming like it's it's incredible sometimes um how people can do that um so i don't do commission work anymore i give away all of my work so if you follow me on instagram twitter facebook I give a ton of my art away and I love it too. I think it's, especially when the person like wins and they receive it, like it's just heartwhelming. It's, it's just really nice to see that they appreciate my work. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you follow me, you, you might like. <laughs> and for the people who are interested in following you, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that uh, are coming across you for the first time watching this video. And then I assume the other half are people who are fans of yours and came across the, this little interview. So uh, for the people that don't know, where can they find you, follow you on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube? And everything? So my, what is it? So my YouTube <laughs> is um, youtube.com slash Gundacris. So G-A-N-D-A-K-R-I-S. Um, Instagram and Twitter are different. It's Miss Gundacris. So instead it's M-I-S-S -S and then Gundacris. So, yeah, that's where right. I'm more social on my YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. <laughs> right. And for the people that are watching the edited video, there will be links to everything in the description below. Uh, so are there any final things that you or Daniel would like to say before we move on to the actual news? Uh, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I mean, I, thank you again for having me on here. I do appreciate it. I am so sorry that I was late because I Googled the wrong, like, Pacific time standard thing, and I was oh, like, "Oh no, you're, you're fine, <laughs> so, Daniel. Daniel, like, actually, oh, you're from Canada. Uh, you're from the <laughs> East Coast, <laughs> uh, West Coast, West Coast. Yeah, there you West go. Coast. But, yeah. yeah so, so Daniel, yeah. Uh, he actually messaged me 
around four Eastern, so a little over an hour ago, and was like, "Are we about to start the podcast?" And I was like, "No, it's in an hour." <laughs> and he, it's because you called me, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I gave him a call like, on oh. Facebook, and I, I guess I worried him that we were starting. Yeah, sooner. I started. I was like, "Uh oh, uh oh, am I late?" <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so here, I rolled out of bed, and I was like, "I gotta get ready." <laughs> Um, also, I saw I was just you know following you on all your socials while you were shouting them out. I was like, <laughs> might as well. Um, and uh, I just noticed this uh, Satura Iwata um, amiibo here. I'll show oh. it to the camera here for people watching the video. And I'm like, wow, that is incredible. That some of these these me ones are incredible. But um, what made you decide to do Iwata as a, as an amiibo? Well, actually, that is the second version of the first version that I ever made. Um, and the first one that I've ever made, it uh, it was so funny because it got way more attention than I thought it was going to get. Um, <sighs> he had just passed away, and I was so inspired to make it that night and finish it the next morning that I did that. And instead of having it commissioned you know like having people ask me like oh can you make me one can you make me one i actually donated that to saint jude so it Ooh. raised about two thousand um, dollars awesome. and all the proceeds went there yeah and it was really cool and i woke up and next thing you know like kotaku and ign and and yahoo gaming like spread the word and that's how it got so many proceeds and it was awesome and yeah, that one I never commissioned ever again. If I make it, it's always like a giveaway or it goes to like a charity. Um, so, yeah, that one's one of my my favorite ones for sure. Yeah. Do you ever have a problem like getting <laughs> enough amiibos to work with though? Because <laughs> like sometimes it can be hard to find enough, right? Oh, especially now. Like yeah. Um, you know, so at, during those days when like the amiibo hunt was on, it was mm -hmm. really hard. Like even I would stay up late um, just to like try to pre-order it, or I'd wake up early and go to like GameStop and Best Buy. You know, it was it was crazy, and I loved those days actually because then I got to meet a lot of people in my community. Um, yeah. But these days now, it's like uh, there's not really a hunt, but you still have to find them because they're starting to get pretty rare. Um, and yeah, it's just it's not as crazy and as fun. <laughs> yeah, I imagine that it can, like especially at the beginning when a lot of the people were really rare and hard to find. Mm -hmm. Not just an expensive <laughs> hobby, but like. Just one that's like you may have the idea to create something, but because you can't actually buy it, then yeah, like because yeah. I'm I'm sure like some amiibo are a lot easier to transform into other creations. So like if you're trying to find something very specific to make something, you might not be able to make it at all, or at least have to alter it from a different one. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. There are some that were really hard to find. Um, if anything, the most I've ordered is definitely Pikachu, because I call that like the Barbie doll of Amiibo. <laughs> you can literally dress him up in anything. So um, I remember ordering from Best Buy, and they're just like, so you have like an order for like a bunch of Pikachu? Um, it was just like, it's just came up on our system so we're gonna have to do a check because i think what they were thinking is that i like resell it so i'll get it resell it um but that wasn't the case they looked at like my custom view and they're just like oh that looks good well you're cleared we're gonna send you those pikachu <laughs> you alternate them enough to where it's like um you know it's completely different and you're fine and i was like cool thank you <laughs> yeah I, I was meaning to ask that like the where you're altering you're altering them and some of the times you were customizing them and stuff was there ever any like bad uh messages from nintendo or negative stuff like asking you to stop or something because i know a lot of times when someone is creating something nintendo related uh from their own artwork or whatever they can like get like a cease and desist or like nintendo's like hey can you please not so you never received anything like that from no, like, thankfully, no. Yeah. I think it's because I've alternated enough to where it's like, and I'll say custom amiibo. I'm not, I don't think it's because I'm claiming any of the characters either, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah I never got it. Um, but, uh, I mean, I guess they like me enough to put me <laughs> on the team. So, 
Um, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, I never, I never got that. I've heard some instances where it's like that, but for me, thankfully, I never got one. Yeah, but, that also makes me wonder. Like, has there ever been uh, a specific amiibo that you tried to create but weren't able to, or like an idea that you had that you weren't able to physically make into something? Ooh. See, I don't know. I can't See, I, really think of any. I was any, ready to move to on to the, the news stories, but there's all <laughs> these sorry. questions keep coming up. <laughs> no, it's okay. I can't really think of any. Um, my determination is pretty high. I don't. My brain always constantly runs like a million miles per hour. So if I have an idea, like for Wada, I would literally stay up all night just to finish it in the morning. So when Detective Pikachu was announced for the first time, I stayed up all night just to finish it and release it the next day. So my determination is pretty strong. Like there are ones where I'm not completely satisfied with the work. Yeah. Um, you know, so, um, but Overall, I've been I've been able to make what I've wanted to. It's more about like I guess quality, um, and making sure if it's it's better than the last one I made. So yeah. <laughs> Chris, what's it like? Uh, all the different podcasts that you've been a part of. I love podcasts. Yeah. I love how, podcasts. Wait, if anyone's all, ever been do doing. It... How often do you guest on podcasts? Because I've only seen like maybe two or three. You mentioned you were on the Nintendo video earlier so like i, with, I have uh, no idea <laughs> have you been on that i have no idea how many to be honest uh, well, um, but so I, would you say I, you're like some of the a couple of the most famous youtube channels that you've been on a podcast for people that are watching that might want to check out things um, that you've also been on nintendo wire they're mm -hmm. amazing i love them they're really good um I don't know. I've been on a lot. I love I love podcasts though. Just if if anyone ever is gonna do it though, just make sure your time zones are correct. <laughs> yes. yes. That's like well, the key. I always mess that up though. It's so funny because I've messed that up like several times in the past. I'm just like, when will I ever learn? But yeah, just make sure you're in the right time zone. Um and uh, no, I love it. It's it, it's always like an honor to be invited on any podcast. I mean, for me, like having to give someone like the the time of day like time is the most precious thing dare i say in this world <laughs> you know so um to give it away to someone i think it's it's really nice and and i mean just being on here it's it's really refreshing and and i love doing podcasts and talking about what i do or what i love or what i think and yeah, yeah. it's fun i love it it's it's really nice see when when i reached mm -hmm. out to you i didn't know whether or not you would say yes or no. Luckily, you were like very nice whenever you were replying. It's like, yeah, I'd love to. And yeah. yeah, so like whenever I was reaching out, I was like, I know like from her YouTube channel, like it only has twenty five thousand subscribers. But like, what if she looks at ours and we have fifty thousand, or I guess a little more than fifty thousand now? She's like, I don't really have the time to do something like that, or. Like, oh well, never! I love maybe? podcasts. Because like you, you had the He's 20, amazing. Yeah, like you, you had the twenty five thousand subscribers. So in my head, I was like, what if she's like busy with her own YouTube channel? She doesn't have the time, or like, what if YouTube isn't even her priority and she's busy like making all of these different things, like the amiibo? Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know. So I was surprised when like you almost immediately were like, yes, I would love to. Oh no! So, thank you for reaching out. Like yeah. again, I mean. <laughs> The fact that people want to hear what I say is crazy because <laughs> I don't think I have much to say, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, you know, I appreciate it. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I get to meet a ton of people. Um, I get to open my mind to, my, uh, mind to other opinions <laughs> and, you know, and and uh, it's fun and, and I like it. So here's, so. A, here's a question I'm at. If you had your own podcast, who are like three people that you would like to bring on as guests? that you may have not had the chance to do anything with them yet. Like whether it's Reggie. a YouTube channel or Twitch <laughs> or Nintendo. Reggie. Reggie, Reggie from Nintendo. Seems, uh, I, I would like to have oh, a yes. podcast at like... I'd not, love to have Reggie. Not a podcast <laughs> like this, but like going out to just like a normal fancy-ish <clears throat> restaurant, like sitting mm -hmm. like face-to-face -face with Reggie and then discussing everything over dinner and so it's like a more relaxed environment instead of one person just in front of a webcam 
Well, then maybe where he's relaxed, he might let some information slip. Like, <laughs> oh, you devious <laughs> bastard. Yeah. So, get him uh, get a little drink. Like, who, can you get some wine? <laughs> who are two other people? Uh, two other. Um, ooh. Let's see. I would like to get Boogie. Um, what is it? Boogie9288 from YouTube. He's like a really cool YouTuber that has helped me. Um, uh, he, he won the Game Awards uh, yeah. Most Trending Gamer or whatever. Oh, It was like a year hell. after. Because I think Greg Miller, who we were talking about earlier, uh, he won the first year they had it. And I think Boogie won the second year. Mm-hmm. So. He's he's amazing. He's a sweetheart, and he he like is very inspirational too. So I like to talk to people about like who really do inspire others to chase after what they want. And again, like he has a huge following, but he still is able to help a lot of people who are upcoming. And for him to take the yeah. time to do that is just like amazing. And he recently um, had the surgery too, because I don't watch did. his YouTube channel, but I know of it. And there's a lot of people yeah. talking about like he just had surgery and just like a bunch of stuff that he had going on. So he seems really mm-hmm. full from everything I've heard. I just haven't had the interest in like going and checking it out. There's already so many that I watch. It's hard to find. Mm-hmm. There's, so time. Many. there's so many. So, um, what, so else? Many. what else? <laughs> well, just cause it's Ryan Reynolds. So <laughs> oh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> can, cause it was like, can I get in, a sample of what Pikachu's going to sound out, like? <laughs> hey, he's from my hometown. Sample. Did you know that? With that? Is he? He's from my hometown. He's from Vancouver. No way. Yeah, you can tell he's got that he's got that Vancouver accent when he talks. That's awesome. See, I love Canada, by the way. I love Canada. Because we gave the world Ryan Reynolds. We you also did. gave you You gave a lot, Michael you gave J. a lot. Justin William Bieber, Shatter. though, I don't know him. You no. can take it back. But... Shh, do not speak of it. <laughs> you said that you love uh Canada. We actually had one video where uh our friend Holly, who was on not the last episode, but the one before that, Holly Wolf. She's from mm. Canada, and she was watching, and she tweeted something, and she was freaking out, and was like, no way! I didn't know Daniel was from Canada, and then, like, I think someone <laughs> else that was from Canada was like... That was Andy from Zelda Informer. He's yeah. one of the main editors there. Oh, he's also he's from Calgary. He's awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> we had our little pride moment. <laughs> yeah, so, like, it was just a bunch of people that watched the YouTube channel were all just, like, pride for Canada. <laughs> yeah. What? How do you say? How do you say your um? What's it called? Because it's not president, but Thoreau. It's prime minister. Yes, prime minister. It's the same he as England. Is you know, so they have a prime looking. minister. Trudeau. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Justin Trudeau. He's a Frenchie, though. He's. he's... Oh no. <laughs> uh, so Justin's what... like enough. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just thinking, like, uh, to go along with with the podcast thing. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? I may even like cut this section out since it's again more about you and put it with like the interview earlier. I think it might uh, make well, more sense. So, uh, mm. like, yeah, wh- why haven't you started your own podcast? You have your own YouTube channel, you- your own following. Um, I do. So, like, <laughs> um, you enjoy going know. on podcasts. Is it? Does I it, do. Is I it do intimidating? Like, like um, starting not the, at the thought all. of starting up your own. The start of starting one is oh. definitely intimidating, mm-hmm. but. For me, like, I'd rather stick to something that I truly love, and that's making art and teaching um, how to make things and be really crafty and creative. So that's why I have YouTube mostly is to make, like, DIYs and how to make custom Amiibos. And I'm probably going to do more in, like, nerdy crafts and stuff like that. So I love teaching. I love art. I'm going to stick to what I really, really like, which is which is that. But I love podcasts, too. I, I, I like joining podcasts. Starting them, I don't know what I would talk about. But <laughs> All right. Uh, Daniel, do you have the news stories pulled up? Uh, it's or another the first one. That you... <laughs> All right, oh, uh, yeah, the Nintendo Labo. All right, I will let you get uh, the second news story, but I'll go ahead and start sure, man. first. All right. This <laughs> is it's really, really hilarious. So, or at least I think it is. Uh, having a lot Are you guys excited it for it? Yeah, no, I, I was having <laughs> trouble trying to pull it up on the, the news story. So, oh, okay. let's see. All right, it finally loaded for me. 
So Nintendo, like yeah, Nintendo <laughs> has just announced 